you very much. Senator Menendez is back. Senator Menendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I pre I'm, congratulations on your confirmation. I was happy to support you. And I think that you've started off on the right track, particularly as it relates to uh, the, uh, the elements of this that are clearly transparent and for accountability. I think those are all good steps. But I have to be honest with you, a lot of questions still remain unanswered. Uh, a lot of details are necessary before I can give it my support. Uh, and I learned my lesson the last time uh, in uh, when Secretary Paulson came before this committee and, and in private entreaties and supported that effort, and uh, I'm not about to go through that again. Uh, I will tell you that if, uh, to some extent, this is like testing the canary in the mine to see whether it lives or dies. As far as I'm concerned, it'd be dead already uh, because there's not a hell of a lot here to, to, to get a sense of. So uh, with that as a... Uh, as, a, as a caveat, um, you know, I'm looking for a plan that ultimately prioritizes Main Street at the end of the day. I'm looking for a plan that helps put cash uh, in the uh, pockets of people who are going to spend them and just businesses that are going to create jobs. And I'm looking for a plan that ultimately ensures that we're going to save a lot more people in their homes, not only because as a societal thing it's good, but it also in terms of home values and uh, neighborhoods. So, uh, you know, right now I, I don't quite understand what the full plan, I got the outlines of it, but I don't quite understand what the full plan is. So let me go after two things specifically and see if I can get some sense. I read in one of the clips today that uh, uh, there was an internal debate over what I call conditionality, how much conditions to put in this process, uh, and that you won that debate uh, internally about what, what level of conditions should exist. One of the areas that I'm interested in is what we're going to do about lending. Uh, you all sent us a statement, uh, this was before you were secretary, but I believe you might have had a little bit something to do with it, that suggested we're going to have lending for institutions that are sound, insist that lending go above the baseline. Uh, I, I'd like to get some extent because if without conditionality, we didn't see this happen. And so one is, what type of conditionality do you envision on the lending issue because we continuously hear about the credit crunch? And the second major uh, tranche of questions I have is about, uh, you know, these buying of bad assets, however we may do that. Now, I understand, I, I read about, and I see your statement about a public-private partnership. Well, how much of it is going to be public? How much is going to be private? How much of it is going, what is the valuation processes that you're looking to pursue? Uh, those, are, those are two areas, I think, that are critical. Uh, for the type of support I'd like to give your efforts. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, let me start with lending conditions. We're going to do the following three things. As a condition for assistance, we're going to ask the banks to provide us with a plan for how they are going to use the assistance to generate a level of lending that is above what ha would be possible in the absence, what would have been possible in the absence of government support. Second, we're going to ask them to report, require them to report monthly on what's happening to lending with a level of detail that we'll be able to see exactly what's happening, again, relative to that initial expectation. And those reports are going to be put in the public domain, so you will be and your constituents will be able to see exactly what's happening, not just who gets assistance, but what happens with that assistance and how it affects actual judgments on lending. As you know, it's a very hard thing to know what would have happened without assistance? Because again, we have an economy where there was too much credit. Credit is shrinking necessarily. And as growth slows, demand for credit from creditworthy borrowers in themselves will also slow. But again, our basic objective is to try to make sure the assistance comes with conditions that will increase the amount of lending that would have been possible in the absence of government assistance. We're going to acquire firms to tell us how they're going to do that. And we're going to monitor and measure what happens in response to that. How, how are you going to determine in the first instance what would have been? Because potentially, I'm sure this is not what your goal is, but potentially one loan might have been uh, greater than what would have been available before. I agree. Or, that would not be an adequate result. Right. <laughs> I think that a uh, dollar of capital. And is, it and is it loan from one bank to the other, or is it loan, you know, if I'm loaning from one bank to another uh, versus loaning into what I want to see, which is, uh, you know, businesses in America and consumers in America so that we can get this credit growing. And is it going to look at the not only the numbers, but the quality, the nature of the loans? Uh, Senator, the, you're absolutely right that the objective of this program is and should be to try to make sure we're getting credit to 
small businesses, and families. That's the ultimate test of this program. And what we're trying to do is to try to meet that basic test. You're also right that it's going to be, it's very hard to measure what would have happened in the absence of assistance. It's a hard thing to do, but the best way to do it, I think, is to have firms commit to how they expect to use it and to be able to see a level of reporting that allows you to see exactly where it's going. And people will be able to look at that and see where it's increasing and where it's not. Hard to know what would have happened in the absence of the assistance, but we're going to do our best to try to navigate through that complicated area. Can you talk to us about asset valuations? Uh, absolutely. Enormously difficult to decide on a mechanism that will give us confidence that the values are fair and realistic and that the government understands the risks we are assuming. There are no perfect ways to do this. One approach is for the government to decide. One approach is for the government to use independent model-based estimates of valuation. We are concerned neither of those two approaches would give us the level of comfort we need. So instead, what we propose to do is design a fund that can have private capital come in with government financing alongside the government's capital and use that as a way to help solve this valuation problem. And we believe doing it that way will leave us with better protections against the risk in making these basic judgments independently on our own. Now, no process is perfect, and you're right to ask what's going to be the mix of risk and return for the government in this area. And we're going to, one of the reasons why we lay this out in general terms today is because this is enormously complicated to get right, and we're going to try to get it right before we lay out the details. And on these elements and others, we're going to come and consult and explain exactly the kind of considerations we're trying to balance and give you our best judgment on how we can solve those things. Well, I look forward to those consultations because, uh, you know, I, I appreciate what you want to accomplish. Uh, I am uh, cautious about where you're headed, and I look forward to the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.